Hi everyone, Nathan here, and welcome back to part 7 of my Hypercube Evolution 3D Printer build. In this part, I will be designing an adapter plate and assembling the Prusa i3 Mark III-S R4 hot end and carrying out a test print. Originally, when I started this build series, the R3 hot end was the latest version available which was going to be a bit of a job to convert over to work with the modular hypercube design. However, the R4 design has taken a much more modular approach. With this new R4 design, it allows us to print all the parts without any modification. Instead, all we need to do is design and print a small adapter plate to go between the R4 hot end and the hypercube back plate. With this new design, we can easily add filament runout detection. Okay, let's get printing. Okay, for the assembly of the extruder, we're going to follow the Prusa guide, starting at step three. Lead this bit, this bit, and this bit. First thing we're going to do is put the two hex nuts in the holes and then a square nut in the top. Make sure that the nut fits down through the hole. Next we need to install the smaller magnet into the filament sensor. Like so. Now we move on to step six of the extruder assembly. I want to fasten this into the body. Back it off a little bit so that the part can move freely. Next we want to install the longer magnet into the outer part, making sure that it does not attract. Then we get our ball bearing piece, place the ball bearing in the hole, place it in there like so. At this point we can test and you can see that when the filament passes through, it pushes the lever across. So we'll put this part aside for the moment. Next we want our extruder motor and the other top part of the extruder. Place this on like so. Then using two 10mm M3 screws, we fasten it into place. Next we can install the Bontech extruder gear, which I have already done. We need to make sure that the gear teeth line up like so and put this piece aside. Next we need the outer fan duct part. We need to insert a M3 square nut in this hole here. making sure that the hole lines up on the back. Next we can move on to installing the hot end into the assembly. First we want to place two screws into this part on the back here. 
Instead of using the 10mm screws, we're going to use 6mm. Then we can get our hot end assembly and install it into the printer. Next, we place the motor mount part on top and then the front fan housing. Next, we want to insert two 35mm screws in place. And this holds the whole assembly together. For our installation, we can skip steps 15 and 16. Next, we want to place the hex nuts into the adapter plate that we designed earlier. Then attach the part to the extruder body, making sure to face the hex nuts on the outside. Next we can install the IR sensor into the body. Next, we can put a 30mm screw into this side of the extruder body, making sure that there are no more gaps. Next, we can route the cable for the stepper motor and install the fan. We want to make sure that we loop the fan cable back on itself. We'll leave the fourth screw for the moment. Next we can put the other part of the Bontec gear into the side enclosure. First we get our two little bearings and slot them inside like so. Then we place that in here making sure we get it round the right way so that when it's installed, it meshes with the other gear. Then we make sure that this spins freely. We want to install a hex nut into this spot here. Then we get another 30 millimeter screw and fasten this in place. At this point, we want to make sure that the gears connect correctly inside and make sure not to tighten it up too much. Then we get a 40mm screw and a spring and install it into the side, like so. Now we can install the fan support, get our part and install a hex nut in this spot here. Then we get our fan shroud and install a square M3 nut in here, making sure to line it up with the hole. Then we get a 20mm screw and install the fan shroud in place. Then we can install the lower fan bracket using a 10mm screw. Then we can install our blower fan into the mount. Finally, we can install the top cover onto the extruder. 
covering up the electronics. Making sure to place the angled side over the filament sensor. And there we have the R4 extruder from the Prusa Mark 3S ready to install and wire into our hypercube. Unfortunately, the adapter shown in the assembly of the R4 hot end didn't take into account that I need an optical end stop for the X axis. It also did not have any provision to fasten the cables to the hot end. So I have actually designed a different version of the adapter plate shown here, which takes into account both the optical end stop and some cable management. Now let's see a basic overview of how I designed this part. First I laid out the design in Fusion 360, getting the dimensions from the original Hypercube parts. Then I extruded the part to the desired thickness. Next I got the measurements from the Prusa part and added two more holes to match up the holes on the extruder. Then we needed to add in a spot to retain the hex nuts both on the front and the back. To avoid printing with supports, I added a very thin layer across the holes we cut earlier. This way, the holes will print as a bridge and not over air. Finally, I added a number of chamfers to make the part easier to work with. As of uploading this video, you can find the STL for this part on Thingiverse. I would recommend printing this in PETG or ABS with an infill of 50% or higher to give it plenty of strength. After assembling the extruder, I had to calibrate the E-steps using the equation shown on the screen and ended up with an E-step value of 133.5. Let's print out a Benchy and see how it looks. As you can see, from a first print, after calibrating the extruder, this is a pretty decent print, with very little stringing and pretty good overhangs. There is some slight inconsistencies on the walls of the Benchy, but I think I can tune that out by adjusting the acceleration and jerk settings. As with any design, there is always a drawback. Moving from a Bowden drive system to a direct drive system, has meant that I've had to slow the printing process down a bit. This is because the weight of the extruder is a lot more than with the Bowden design. However, switching to a direct drive system means we no longer need strong retractions and we can print flexible filaments with relative ease. This concludes the run through and assembly of the Prusa R4 extruder assembly and the design of an adapter plate for the Hypercube Evolution. In the next video, we will run through installing a BL Touch clone on the printer and setting up a filament runout sensor on the machine. Please be sure 
to like, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when the next part of this build is made available. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them in the comments section below so that I can help make videos that empower you to make and build anything.